There's a call for Auckland University's Vice-Chancellor to pay back thousands of dollars in discounted rent for a $5 million house in one of the city's priciest suburbs. The vastly bought the four-bedroom Parnell house complete with swimming pool and spa and was renting it to VC Dawn Freshwater at cut price rates. Auckland University justified the purchase and cheap rent by claiming the house would be used for fundraisers and hosting official university guests and it was also a recruiting tool. But in an Auditor General's report has found there was no business case for the purchase and no justification for the significant rent discount. It also said the uni's decision to buy the property was not based on objective criteria and Auckland University was unable to show the expenditure was moderate and conservative. While well, joining me now is the National President of the Tertiary Education Union, Dr Michael Gilchrist. Michael, that is a long list of missteps. How would you describe the university's handling of this? Well, uh, from our point of view, Lisa, this, this report has kind of lifted the lid on a broader problem. Uh, the Auditor General has, has reported that this particular expenditure wasn't justifiable, impartial, transparent, uh, and so on, and didn't follow the university's own policies. Uh, but most of those concerns apply, from our members' point of view, to current decision-making more broadly, and in particular uh, to the proposal to, well, the, the plans to cut 300 staff uh, to make them redundant, about 5% of the workforce. Uh, and, you know, the, the, we don't believe those are, that decision is justified or transparent. And we hope that this report may, you know, prompt a change in that area. So you're talking specifically about Auckland University here? Look, with all of our universities, we have the problem that they run on a commercial model. Uh, and that means making surpluses uh, on the model of making profits for shareholders and on enriching senior management. Um, and, you know, that, that what this report shows is how far uh, our universities, and in, you know, in this case it's Auckland, have kind of lost sight of their mission, which is to serve the public good, to serve the public interest, uh, to provide high quality equitable, accessible uh, public education, particularly for our domestic students. We've been getting a bit of feedback from people who work at Auckland University and they say they've been told to tighten their belts, that hours have been reduced, there's threats of redundancy, yet they look at this spending and, well, it sends a totally different message. What are people on that campus saying to you? Well, they have been asking for some time for much more transparency, uh, in, in the decision-making, much more information about the financial situation. Uh, it's some, you know, for example, uh, the, the university's been quite deceptive in some of the claims it's made about its financial position. It said that they were looking at a four, $48 million loss for 2023. In fact, it was an $8 million defi- dollar de- They're looking at an $8 million deficit. The sale of this house could probably cover that. Uh, in 2023, the $40 million added in there was their projected surplus. So they were talking about a loss, you know, including their surplus. Uh, and, and that's quite deceptive. Um, and we see that in this case, the Auditor General has found there was no justification, no formal business case presented. The same could be said for this current process of massively cutting back on staff, uh, when there will be just about equal numbers at, at least, probably even greater numbers of students overall with domestic students flowing in. Um, there's no consultation, no evaluation, uh, no assessment. Staff are not involved and the mission of the university is being lost sight of. The decision to sign off on this particular um, chunk of money, the $5 million for the house, it was signed off by a single person, the former vice-chancellor, ticked the box and the money was spent. Is that sufficient scrutiny? Yeah, I mean, we're talking about a $10 million financial delegation to the vice-chancellor, which he exercised. Absolutely not. And from the board down, uh, it, we have to do much better. Um, we need much more transparent decision making, much more, much better justification. As I say, most important of all, the whole kind of the, the mission, of the, the purpose, uh, and the strategic goals of the organisation need to be kept more clearly in, in mind. How much does a VC get paid, Vice Chancellor? Well, this report says that the Vice Chancellor is paid the fourth highest paid public servant in the country. Uh, the Vice Chancellor of, of Auckland University. Um, I think that's around 700k. Um, I couldn't quote you the figure, but you know, they're, okay, paid, so they're paid well up there, yeah. So, fourth highest uh, a public servant, according to the report. Can they afford to pay market rent? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, look, as I say, this is a, this is a function of that commercial model. 
Um, unfortunately, you know, there are two goals, to provide returns for shareholders and, uh, you know, to line, you know, to, to provide the best possible conditions for, for senior management, referring to an international market which is artificially inflated. So what does that Parnell House represent to you and the people that you represent? Look, our members, there'll be real anger amongst our members and they'll be saying that there has to be change. There have to be changes in how things are done and what things are done, what decisions are made. And in particular, it's not too late to scale back dramatically on the plan, the current plans for redundancies and look at how the university can be responsible to those it's really serving, uh, which are the students of the country and uh, the public more generally, uh, and, and, you know, take the right strategic approach in order to serve that purpose. If that is what is supposed to happen or needs to happen, Michael, how do you make it happen? Because speaking to the Auditor General's office, being embarrassed publicly, having sunlight poured on bad decisions, well, that, that's, the, that's the punishment. Yeah, I mean, well, it's the start, really, isn't it? But, look, we need, we need uh, staff, uh, our members, we need students as well to join uh, forces. We need uh, the public to demand a, a, a change, a real change in how things are done in these institutions. And that means shifting away from that commercial model, and it means the government, too, has to put the pressure on to see a different kind of uh, decision-making process and structure in the, in the universities. Is there anything from within Auckland University that suggests they're open to what you're saying? Well, you know, as I say, they have been quite deceptive, we think, uh, in some of their statements so far on what they're doing. Uh, you know, the problem with their current processes uh, is that there is no careful assessment, consultation or planning of this huge change, which could lead to a step change backward. Uh, in the quality of, of education offered at, at Auckland University to our New Zealand students in the absence of international students. Because you have the same number of students, you've cut back staff, you're cutting back expenditure uh, in order to realise surpluses in the future. Uh, and that can only lead to one thing. Appreciate your time this evening. That's the National President of the Tertiary Education Union, Dr Michael Gilchrist. And just a reminder, we did ask Auckland University um, to provide someone for an interview today, anyone. Uh, they said they weren't available.